Hey guys, what's up? It's your buddy Poloco hey, hey. and of course Bear Pigman as always, and later on, our buddy Max. Over here soon enough. Yep, and uh, tonight, possibly some take some Sega tapes, but we're gonna start off with Shantae and Pirate Screws, which I decided to get into because the new DLC for Shantae Half GD Hero is gonna drop before the end of the year, which is really nice. Oh, they're they're making even more? Yeah, that was part of the Kickstarter goals. Um, one of them was Risky Mode, and then the other one was uh, a, a game mode for all the other characters, uh, Bolo, Roddy Tops, and uh, Sky and Wrench. And mm -hmm. their mode is like a, a three-at-once kind of gameplay, or a puzzle platformer kind of thing that they say is content complete. They have new voice actors and actresses for all the characters and uh, is going to drop before the end of the year. So that's pretty exciting. Oh man, they are putting yeah. a little, I like we did we had a, the, the last DLC that we did was pretty damn lengthy. Yeah, honestly, Way Forward is uh, starting to become one of my favorite companies um, just yeah. because they do other stuff, but their mainstay is kind of the Shantae character that kind of didn't really have much at the start. Like, it mm -hmm. came into a late cycle Game Boy Color game, and it's just... I kind oh, of discovered remember, it through Half GD it, yeah. Hero, which was really good. Yeah, I remember. I played the uh, Game Boy one, um, and... And it wasn't that oh, good. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, we rediscovered it for that one stream, and it was not all that good. Yeah. I mean, it was but... still... For, for, for its time, it was good, but it was definitely not a... I'm looking back on this with fond memories. Yeah. The original Futch is a pretty good price, though. Yeah. But, um... We, uh... Th there are a few games between there, and this is, I think, maybe the one... The second to newest one, Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. Uh, and mm -hmm. I don't know anything about this, but it's got that that classic style. Uh, it's got kind of pixel graphics, I think. So let's just start. It always seems to start off with Skettletown being under attack. Mm hmm Also, she's not a genie in this one? Or is she really? still a half-genie? She says she's a human. Maybe what something in the half the last she... game made her human. Hmm. Or she gets the other half? Maybe, maybe that this is a prequel? I guess she's Can only listen? human here. Huh. This one feels a lot more Contra like. Yeah. Like maybe or, this. Uh, metal slug. Maybe this originally came out on a Game Boy system? Uh, I'll look it up and uh, let's take a look. Or maybe it just looks like that. It definitely feels like they wanted to... Uh... Oh, this one is um, Pirate's Curse, right? Yeah. Where 
where's the, uh, there we go. Oh, it came out in 20... 2014. Um, it was originally a 3DS game. Ah, uh, okay. And then it I got ported to a bunch of places. Yeah. Okay, so inventory stuff is still... I guess that got carried over. Hmm. <laughs> There's Toad. <laughs> hey there, Shante! <laughs> I'm the Brat! I'm much bigger than this one! I, I've been eating too many calzones, you see! Because I ate an entire man! He, he just... I opened my mouth and he got in! Kami never had this problem! Check something. Ah, okay, let's get Max in. Okay. Okay, you still got visual? Uh, it is... Looks like it's trying to load. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, guys. Hey, hey, Max. Uh, let's just make sure... I think I have to reset... I think you have to reselect the window. Uh, okay, stop sharing. Screen share. There we go. Alright. You guys can see go. that? There we go. Yep. Yep. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go put the cat upstairs. She's being kind of annoying. That's why you don't have pets. Just live your life alone. So, Max, we're not very far into the game at all, so you came in at, at a pretty good time. I think this is the one that I did start playing. Uh, this is Pirate's Curse. Mm. Oh yeah, Risky's Revenge was the first one. I mean, the first new Shantae. The first playable Shantae. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, was it like, uh... It was Shantae, and then Risky's Revenge, and then... I this think one. This one. And then half genie hero. Mhm. Mm so we're basically going in, in reverse. <laughs> did you actually finish um, half genie hero? I did. I might play it again on stream. I it's just I had this issue where it was new, and I wasn't sure, you know, if I wanted to stream the whole thing. Right. I did stream you were all afraid of the of spoiling. Uh, yeah, but then like WayForward was cool about it, and they said. Yeah, if you're gonna stream stuff, that's fine. Just like be mindful of what you post. Cause there's this guy on YouTube that will just post, "Oh, it's this new game that just came out two days ago. Here's all the end bosses in the thumbnail." Jesus. Yeah. Wait, what happened? It's uh, we were talking about like posting spoilers and stuff. Oh yeah. Shantae there's... kills Dumbledore. Yeah. <laughs> and then Sephiroth. No wait, Eris. Both same Both. big sword. Yeah. Oh, you mean Cool Ranch? More than one... Yeah, Cool Ranch. One... Yeah, Cool Ranch. Fit more than one person on it. Oh man, I like the graphics though. Yeah, it's like we were saying. This is uh, originally a 3DS game. It's... Yeah, so actually fits the. Uh... I guess this is would be a, a good game to kind of examine, like, in comparison to a Kickstarter game. Because, to my knowledge, this was not Kickstarter in, in any way. This I was don't think not, so. I believe. Uh, I know the soundtrack... Okay, so the soundtrack was done by the guy who did Shovel Knight, and uh, oh. the artwork was done by Inti Creates, so it kind of looks a little... Now that I'm looking at it, it kind of has that, like, Mega Man Zero... Uh, look to it. No company can really escape the look of their own pixel art. Pretty much. Like, back in the day, you could really instantly tell the difference between, like, Konami, Capcom, SNK arcade games. Uh-huh. Yeah. Dead giveaways every time. 
I mean, that's not a bad thing, though, right? No, it's not. Like, Good nobody, nobody says, oh, that looks like a Metal Slug art, and then goes, oh, man. Damn. Yeah, I would love for somebody to mistake my art for Metal Slug art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I could animate like that, I would actually be broke. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like SNK. <laughs> <laughs> Are they broke? Yeah, we were we were talking about how uh, for three for two weeks in a row I've been two out of two with uh, recommendations for things that begin with Doki Doki, uh -huh. uh, Doki Doki <laughs> Literature Club, Doki Doki Universe. And We've got to get you like, on Doki Doki Universe sometime, Max. Yeah, holy what shit! I love this. Okay, um, so it is... yeah, it's a uh, basically. I say basically, that doesn't really mean anything. It's a, a game that consists mostly of personality quizzes. And you do the personality quizzes to kind of get stuff to decorate your home. And you're kind of like this little robot in space and you can go to other planets and interact it's with people. 2017 and out, you're just now discovering LiveJournal? You say that, but it was kind of made originally for that kind of social, like, media kind of thing. Like... It was made for it Konami was... to be kind of like that, and then yeah, Konami... it was initially supposed to be a, a, a DS game for Konami called What's Your Type, um, and then Konami like amazingly didn't murder the property, but instead gave it back to the uh, property holder, who is the man who created Toe Jam and Earl. Uh, yeah, and then basically said, "Hey, you do with it what you want." So he ended up making a Facebook app called Deco Deco Mail, um, where I think it primarily just did, like, mail to each other, but by, like, he did a, like, really good, like, emoji, um, like, half word, half emoji, uh, thing with a bunch of his art in it, uh, and personality quizzes, like, then basically, uh, he made it for PS4 and, uh, PS3. Get into this whole full game called Doki Doki Universe. But, uh, I was saying now, <laughs> one of my friends uh, said, Oh, next week you gotta get him on Doki Doki Majo Shinpan. Which, as a as a big SNK fan, that was, that was a hard game to see being made. How's that? D do you know what Doki Doki Majo Shinpan is? No. That is oh, the yeah, game for DS where... Oh yeah, of course I know what that is. <laughs> it's it, 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 for an SNK fan, like, it's like the shame of the SNK world. Uh, it was, um, like, you're a, you're in high school and you have to determine who's a, what girl's a witch by literally oh, that's... touching them. Well, why didn't oh, you yeah. use, like, the American that's name fine. where it's, like, rub witches or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that name once, and I just went to jail. Yeah. Just, yeah. like, you open the box and little tiny cops pop out. Yeah, no, that's the game that funded KOF 14 and 13 and 12. Well, that's great, but I could also rob a bank and, like, build an orphanage with it, but that doesn't make it right. Well, exactly. I don't know. In that case, it would be right, but you get what I mean. I mean, SNK's <laughs> development cycles are just a little surreptitious. If they recently abandoned the whole like Pachi slot market, they swore off of it forever when that was their cash cow for pretty much the last ten years, give or take. But like they just go through periodic cycles of bankruptcy and redemption. It's it's like once every five years, I swear to god. It's been like that since the early two thousands. Yeah, they're trying. <laughs> hey listen, they got us wind jammers on PS4. That, oh, yeah, that's pretty fucking pretty amazing. Good, yeah. And they're actually, um, it's rumored that they're working on another fighter right now. A sequel oh, to Neo Geo Battle Call. It's awesome. Alright, jury duty. Yeah. Listen, I can't be mad at them. They gave me Garo on PS4 too. Like, oh, yes. Can never have Garo on too many consoles. Because for a while we could only get it on Dreamcast. Mm hmm. Or that uh, Japanese PS2 
port, which I didn't have a modded PS2 to play it on. Man, these characters look great in Pixels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they did a really art. great job with the art in this game. Like, the art style, this, I'm, I'm digging it. I liked, I liked um, Half Genie Hero 2, but I'm liking this. Yeah, the I thing like is, Half Genie Hero is very it. different. Yeah. Half Genie Hero is it, really different. Yeah. It's just, it's really stylized and cutesy and sandblasted. Wait, what do you mean sandblasted? Like everything's shiny? Like it's just, yeah, everything's shiny and smooth and not as detailed. Yeah, I can see that. Waxed over. Mm hmm. Kind of paper dolly, but the animation is really well done for what it is in Half Genie Hero. Right. Aww. So apparently in this one, we're like a full human now. Like we don't have genie Yeah, Shanta. Yeah, she lost her powers. Spoilers! Yeah. <laughs> John, look at that. That's good animation. It's a good graphics. Good graphics! <laughs> I can make good graphics. <laughs> and they really like busting in on the bath. I mean, it's the great American pastime. So, I haven't played it yet, but I've seen one scene from the game that actually makes me want to get uh, Evil Within 2. Uh, and that is one where your character goes to a... Goes to someone who's, like, barricaded themselves in a building. And they're like, Johnny, you gotta... You, you can't stay in here forever, you have to go outside. I can't go out there, Sebastian. There's evil out there. <laughs> well, there's evil within... Two... And the two of them both stop and look directly at the camera. <laughs> so and I looked at that and I said, game? I... No, it's supposed to be like a semi, you know, serious, uh... Horror game, but I guess now they're like, fuck it, give it a little bit of self-awareness. And in this case, a lot more self-awareness. Oh, did we, uh, forget to change? Uh, I came from the Amiga. Uh, Excuse me? Is the oh. uh, title card? Okay, I'll I'll fix it. I'll fix it uh, right now. All those hot, all those hot James Pond community fans are gonna come in here and be so disappointed. <laughs> what sucks is it wasn't even the right James Pond. I thought we were doing Robocod, but it's like the first one where he doesn't even have powers. Yeah, that uh, that was one that I played as a kid, and uh, that game sucks. Yeah, I thought I updated this. There we go. <clears throat> Update information. Hope that fixes it. Yeah, sorry. Um, maybe we'll play James Pond again later. <laughs> We're gonna lose our only viewer. Goodbye to my only viewer. To all of my reader. <laughs> The lamp button. What's the... Oh, okay. No, I hate to disappoint my... fan. I love that all the original townspeople got put into the new game. Yeah, they carried over. It's really cute. Yeah. Same goes yeah. for the um, the theme around here, I think. I mean, it was rearranged for Half-Genie Hero, but... 
Also, this one doesn't do the weird, um... Like, in the first game, it was like... You had to go up to access different parts of the town. Like, it was on a weird pseudo-3D plane. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that blue. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> A rude dude with a bad attitude. Who's bad enough to rescue the president. But not this one. Not this one. Oh, is this we'll the just, game that had we'll one just of the straight to the burgers. Obsessed <laughs> with eating one of the monkeys hanging around? I don't know, or we haven't that? gotten that far yet. <clears throat> oh, it might have been... Um, Risky's Revenge. But, it, like, every time you finished one of the events, like, the dialogue would change with the townsfolk in the game, and she just kept on talking about eating one of the monkeys. <laughs> I can't blame her. They look delicious. Right. Like, they probably go well with bananas. <clears throat> I have a hard time figuring out what Risky Boots is. A pirate, dumbass! Well, I know that, but is she a ghost pirate or a zombie pirate? Or just or a, she a pirate, pirate ghost. With, a, with a really bad spray tan, you know? Oh, here's the human, like, adult baby. <laughs> Why am I this? <laughs> Why am I this? Did they take all my stuff? No, I got it. <laughs> oh, here's the bathhouse. She wasn't in the in the game though. I think it was somebody else. She wasn't in Half Genie here, I don't think. Tons of fun to be had at the library. Books are gateways to worlds of magic. Yeah, there's a lot of free gum under the desk. Mm -hmm. Plus they have internet on dial-up, and you can go to MySpace and GeoCities. Oh yeah. Yeah, I gotta update my Rurouni Kenshin shrine. Right, your Sailor Moon uh, uh, personality I gotta, quiz. I I gotta update my, uh, angel links, uh, circle. Make sure all those sites still link. Got a brand new fire gif. Oh, I got yeah, the neon like, alien dancing. Yeah. A heart squid? That's how you get health? Oh, heart yeah! Heart squid. Yeah, Peter gotten a big stink over this one. Oh, it takes four of them. <laughs> so for one heart, we have to sacrifice four heart squids. Here's this. Takes guy. twice as much in real life. Well, 
uh, these are these are single use. Yep, I never really used many of them except for the pike balls, because those will take out bosses really fast. Hmm. Oh, these are upgrades. Uh, mm hmm. Damn, I'm a little short. Can you credit me like four rubies, guy? <laughs> guy who just likes pillows. I wonder how many other people in town saved their progress. <laughs> I got the yard cleaned up, better save. Drink your scarecrow milk, Dave. It's good for you. I don't know if I would drink anything that came off the scarecrow. <laughs> These monsters look really good, though. I also like how they give you an indication of what pits are bottomless. Like, yep. I imagine later you'll find some that you can jump down. I'm pretty sure there is, yeah. That's where you get the golden ultimate armor. Well, there you go. You know, if these things don't uh -huh. have any survival instincts, if they're just going to sit around, maybe it's better that I do this. I don't know. I think we're the monsters. No, that's these guys. This is what the system is telling you. The crooked system. Oh, you've, you've got blue on. It tells me you're better. No, I think they're just gummed up. They're all gunky. Yeah. Maybe they just really like denim. I do know people who just really like denim. Okay, Dave, you're gonna have to jump really hard for this one. I think I can do it. I think I can. I think I can. Uh, I think I can. Uh, I can't. If I don't do it after one attempt, then it's not worth doing. Oh, this is from the first game. Yeah, they recycled a lot of content from the first one. Yeah. Like, I know we barely spent much time in the first game, but yeah, they, this is from the first game. I mean, when you spend, like, five or six days on assets for one enemy, you better believe you're going to use it in the sequel. Mm -hmm. Oh, Vento. I've got a lot of food right now, so I'm, I'm good on health, I guess. I mean, you only can take two hits before you die. Uh, yeah, but, there's, but those uh... are quarter hearts. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is Legend of Zelda-style health. Zombie kids. <laughs> now, are those kids who died and then came back, or were they the children of zombies? 
I... We're gonna say the former, because I don't want to imagine the latter. Suit yourself. You've never seen Dead Alive? <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> Movie fucking ruled. Oh, they need. They want flesh pops. Of course they do. I mean, but the I best can't... candy for kids is always in the sewers. Mm -hmm. And rotting. <laughs> well, let me go into the sewer and get it then. <laughs> Backwards, upside down, and inside out. Now we're trapped inside without a royal gate key. Aw. What's up, squid? Ah, <laughs> uh, I think this was from the first game too. There we go. Oh, so it's okay. So they carried over like the quest items are from enemies that you just have to go beat. Yep. I think there are other things, like you can feed the mayor some of the items that you pick up, and he gives you stuff. Oh, you like feed him? You can give him whatever I think it's steaks no it's mayor mayor chow mayor oh food. yeah it's fancy feast is your mayor's coat dull <laughs> Try you better mix an egg feast. in there <laughs> it's one of those situations where the, like the mayor is a cat no, he's just a mayor. Oh god, while playing uh, Jackbox um, 4, we discovered uh, one of the questions in Fibbage was about a penguin that got um, elected to, like, Norway's National Guard. Yeah, that's Sir Nils Olaf. Yeah, yeah. I did not know about this until... Um, that exact moment. And I literally stopped the stream or stop the game to find the video of him waddling around. Uh, He's the only military figure I respect. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, you mentioned this, it's kind of funny. Um, you know that uh, penguin that lives in Japan that uh, it like would walk around town with a little backpack on and like the, the fish market would give it fish and then it would take it back home? Yes! Oh my god. Uh, Lala the Penguin. I Why read are up... penguins in Japan so fucking good? I read up about that, and it's like... It, there's this backstory where it's like, this guy was fishing, and he and he dredged up an injured penguin, and he gave it to his fiance as, like, you know, it was injured, and was like, when it dies, I can stuff it, and we can make it a memento, but instead they decided to keep it. And, like, work out... <laughs> A thing with the local because it's in like kind of the rural area like a small town yeah. and uh, just worked it out with the shopkeepers where if the penguin comes by 
uh, they just give it a fish and put a fish in its backpack and like it'll stop by some of the other neighbors places and uh, like just cool off a little bit like it'll hose it off <laughs> but they mention Sir Niels Olaf and they kind of say like yeah this guy had a penguin and he had it like in a little cooled enclosure and it had like mirrors and stuff so it wouldn't get lonely but it's really you know it's actually kind of cruel to have a penguin because of the needs that they have and if you yeah. buy them you need to like buy multiple and you need to have the money to like keep it properly otherwise it's cruelty and yeah you need that, to turn yeah. an entire room in your house into a fridge basically yeah and they said that if you like a better way to do it is to go to your zoo and for like a fee you can adopt an animal and you can have like certain visitation rights or if it's like you go to the zoo and you want to just see the one that you adopted you can go do that and uh like they have these successors so like there's still like a, a penguin there's a Niels Olaf penguin but it's not the original they just like here's like his son and that's like the new Niels Olaf yeah it's pretty neat I didn't oh, know about that shit. yeah it's not immortal like Punxsutawney Phil yeah <laughs> yeah they just don't have all their needs at home they don't have the anime girls they don't have uh <laughs> missing some vital vital components there Yeah, if you don't get your penguin a subscription to Crunchyroll, the ASPCA mows you down. Mm-hmm. Like, just literally drives to your house in, like, a big death machine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cruelty towards the animals is is cruel. Man, this eel is delicious. Notice nobody said anything. It's because eels are ugly and stupid. Oh, it's great. Well, more importantly, they're delicious. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you're gonna have before Dave. It's really stringy. If you're gonna have the audacity to be born delicious, then you'd better make up for it in some other way. I mean, to be fair, the eel's other, like, thing it can do is occasionally become completely electric on its own volition, which is kind of cool. Which is why we don't eat those ones. <laughs> All I'm saying is, if the dodo could shock people, maybe it would still be alive. <coughs> Okay, so we just ditched our court summons to this elderly guy. Or maybe if they were born with a little minigun. Mmm, now we're talking. I mean, yeah, isn't that pretty much what we always do with court summons? <clears throat> From some old person? Here, you like, <laughs> here, you like being close to death. <laughs> Is it my birthday? Every day of the week. The, give me the money, though. I don't know. It's it's not like a, enough. it's not like a curse where you just pass it on. It's like oh now you're <laughs> now you have to go to court. Wait a minute. What did we just get? Oh, we can eat the flesh. Pump? Oh yeah, if you want to. Uh, no, I don't want to. Wait, how do I? Mm -mm. Ah, okay. The forbidden map. Okay. I guess we have to take the Forbidden Mac back to Risky. If you eat it, the game just takes a really dark turn, and then Shantae has to crave flesh. Yeah, Shantae just kind of slumps down and is like, oh god, what have did I you, done? Did you actually help out Bolo, or did you forget about it? Uh, well, I gave him the flesh pops, and then he gave me the key. Oh, right, right. I'm just a dumbass. Yeah. But the kids are just there for ambiance now. Maybe they want more. I've got plenty of flesh pots if you, if you guys want any. Yeah, I think they really just want to skeletonize Bolo.
I wonder how zombies and skeletons feel about each other. Well, I would say that zombies kind of look down on skeletons because zombies are basically skeletons who still have their meat. Yeah, like, it, would there be some kind of like either that, either they look down on them, racism, or? or it's like skeletons or just zombies that have been around for longer? Maybe yeah, they're like terrified of skeletons. Would they kind of treat them how like we? Like, if you're playing an MMO, and you see someone who's in, like, level 70 gear, and clear that they're raiding, is that how, like, a zombie would view a skeleton? I don't know. It depends on if it's, like, one of those skeletons where it's just they're naked, or <laughs> if it's, like, the kind where they've got the battle armor and stuff. Yeah, they got pauldrons mm. five times the size of their torso. Right. Like, if you're a skeleton, you've got to master that kind of janky walk. Where it looks like you're stop motion animated. I mean, then again, if you like, if you if you were in a war, you don't you don't wear your purple heart everywhere you go. Why should skeletons have to wear their well, battle armor? That's because when you're a skeleton, you've got to, to be get ready respect. for battle at a moment's notice. I mean, skeletons yeah, but... have enemies everywhere. <laughs> that shouldn't stop them from getting respect from their peers. I mean. Skeletons have to worry about dogs. You know? I'm yeah, they're a dog would eat zombie, too. They have, they have a lot of things to worry about. They have to worry about dogs. Um, osteoporosis. Museums. Museums, yeah. You've got to worry about... Uh, I don't know, racism, probably. <laughs> probably There's a little zombies. bit of racism. Did I collect enough for a heart up? Uh, I don't have enough. <laughs> yeah, do you not remember from the last game? Oh, we could go to Spit World. I'm at Salvia Island. I hear they got the. Oh, never mind. Oh, I mean, you can okay. just say Ireland. <laughs> I like this. It shows you how many squids you've got and how many. I guess there's like bad guys that you have to beat. Oh, those are the uh, the little assholes that give you the bad oh, the dark juju magic. or whatever. Yeah, that... yeah. Which you actually collect in the Risky Boots DLC. I do like that. Um, Moira is severely Irish. When they announced the new Overwatch character Moira, all I could think about was like in Bioshock, where the bad guy like drops his act. And he, like, puts on the fake Irish accent. He's like, oh, oh me poor wife, Moira. Me wee <laughs> baby, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what this is. Um, Moira or Odedro. Um, Odedora? I think your name is. Ododi Odo. Oh, I just, wait, 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 Oh, come on. Let me dress up a little bit. What the hell are you looking at? Do I have anything to get rid of you? Got a handful uh, of french fries? <laughs> mine. Okay, this, this monster just pukes up half-digested fish. 
Good for the fish. You get a second chance. Wow. It's neat seeing all the original guys. I wonder if they're in the game before this one, too. <clears throat> Some of them are. Oderen. That's that's how that's how it's pronounced. Oh, I need to eat. Moira Oderen. We can just call her what she is, the piss wizard. No, she's the vape mancer. Have you seen those healthy ropey streams, Tom? Yeah, she's <laughs> cranking up the ohms and getting some chunky reps on that vape. <laughs> How does she blow in that yellow cotton? Uh, I'm I will know in a couple of in hopefully a minute. <laughs> I haven't actually got a chance to play her yet. There's the mermaids. But I hear like a very aggressive Zenyatta, which that's how I play Zenyatta anyway. Yeah. Is he just retiring from the Overwatch game? No, he's still gonna be there. I think if if you can get the two of them in one team, you're basically gonna have a healing uh, support squad that's gonna do more damage than your DPS. It's nice that they're putting in more off healers. Like Mercy, every yeah. game was starting to get a little tiring. We just need another defense hero already. Yeah. I mean, we had Sombra. Sombra's a support character, damn it. Yeah, Sombra doesn't do shit if the team doesn't follow up. Wait, what? You're you me. You mean every game? You are you look like me. Who are you? Hmm. Now you become nothing. Oh no, you ate the flesh pop. You can never go back. Oh, I've been eating them. <laughs> you might have missed it, but I've been chowing down on those things. <laughs> now you're gonna get the bad end. Don't kink shame me. She's gonna succumb to mad Shantae disease. <laughs> no, that's what happens when you feed her other Shantae's. You just... well, you did kill the bat. I don't know if you ate it. Stream tends to skip a few frames here and there. It Does it look mostly okay, though? Oh, yeah. Okay. Just once in a blue moon, it just kind of stalls for a second. I still get the audio, but then it takes a, you know, second or two to kick back in. Yeah, guys on stream, let me know if I start dropping frames, because I don't know what happened last stream, but I started Mondo dropping frames. I don't know what the problem was. I don't know. It, it seems like it's Discord, not exactly your software. Yeah. It could also sometimes be your internet. Uh, we had a little bit of that on uh, <clears throat> on Sunday of Extra Life, where literally, like, at about 3 o'clock, maybe about... No, nah, about two hours into Sunday, um, I went from a literally no drop frames for all of Saturday. 12 hours, no drop frames. And then all of a sudden, I was dropping maybe 40, 50% of them. Yeah. And that was just because my... Upload speed. My download speed was fine. My upload speed dropped to near zero. So like, the stream would have been completely fucked. I had to give Ray the uh, stream key, and told him to just play Overwatch with people in chat uh, while I yell at Comcast for an hour. Thank God they, they got us back up enough to play Bo uh, Bloodborne. I wanted to say. Um... On stream, congratulations! Uh, a thousand bucks for extra life. Wow, it, not bad. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Good uh, job. I'm, okay, the key to that was not doing one 24-hour straight stream, which we learned that the hard way with the extra life. Um, uh -oh. But we'll know that in the future. We did two 12-hour um, days instead, and, you know, we, we we had about 20 people watching the entire time. That's a good crowd. Uh-huh. Sorry I missed out on it. I'd been really busy. It's okay. I'll, I know a lot of people were, and really the only thing I guess I didn't like about it was 
I know that on Extra Life, especially when we did it on day of, it's like there are so many other people who are playing, and I wanted to even go into a couple of my friends' ones and, like, you know, talk and watch or do something, and it's like, no, I can't I can't even watch anyone else. I, the only one I managed to catch a little bit of was a Sarge Club in the break uh, in between our two days. Sheesh. But, uh, oh, every Dave. like... With this yeah. one, each of those statues will stay up for a certain amount of time. It's different among all of them, so you just have to figure out which ones stay the longest and hit those first. Okay. Mm. It's not in that order. God, I remember getting frustrated at this one really fast. Okay, so this one goes down first. That one goes down second. That one third. And that one fourth. So... The one that stays up the longest, I have to hit first. So it's this, yeah. this, that, and that. I think that's it. Okay. There you go. Thanks for the tip. I, yeah, it took me a while because I'm a fucking dumbass. But I played through this game most of the way. I didn't beat it. What do you think of this one? See, I haven't really played a whole lot of Half Genie Hero yet, so I can't make some calls, but I think I do like this one the most. I would pick up Half Genie Hero. Like, I know you're super busy and everything, but I'm, you know how much I like Half Genie Hero. Oh, it's yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not denying it's a great-looking game. It was adorable. But whenever I'm not, you know, like, brushing up on Street Fighter or whatever... Uh, the only game I've really been playing a lot of recently was Bloodborne. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm like two years late to the party, but Risa and I have both been playing. There is and... there is no late time for Bloodborne. Yeah, I regret not getting into it sooner. It's It's been something else. That game is so good. Like, um... For, uh, Extra Life this year, Max, I did, uh... Four hours of every game in the Soulsborne series. Oh shit! Did you make it past the tutorial in any of them? Uh, we did. Uh, so you know how like when a person does like a 5K marathon, um, instead of just one lump sum, he'll ask people to donate per distance ran, like, mm -hmm. a, you know, five dollars a mile or something like that. That was kind of what I had in mind for this. Uh, like for me in particular, I donated uh, three dollars per boss downed and a dollar per death. <laughs> what was the damage? Uh, for me, we killed 17 bosses and died 95 times, a lot of them on purpose. Wow. Well, yeah, I can't really blame you there. Um, I mean, I over, the span of five, over the span of five games, like, yeah. it's not that bad. Um, so my kick into the entire thing was about $150. Uh, we had some guy at, like, by the time we ended the stream, we were at about $747, and a Aww. friend of mine who wishes to remain anonymous donated, um, 242 to round wow. this out to a thousand. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I told him that if I'm ever in the, if I'm ever in his area again, I will take him out for every drink in the world. <laughs> Yeah, this part of the level just blows. There is too much in your way on these tiny platforms. Yeah. And you get knocked down. Does it even seem like you... Yeah, knockback is, like, a thing. That's the biggest pain in the ass. Yep. I'm not sure how I feel about knockback. <sighs> it's definitely, of the tropes, the thing I like the least. It really just depends on the game. Sometimes it makes, Sometimes it makes sense. It really depends on if they're prioritizing, like combat or if it's about tight platforming because if that's the case then i can understand it it's just i don't know the particular design they went for in this part of the stage in this game really pissed me off compared to the rest where it doesn't seem that perilous like there are plenty yeah. of other parts of pirate's curse where there are lots and lots of death pits or require a lot of precision platforming and still have enemies but like this was just really saturated. It's really difficult to get around the enemies that are hopping around. It's a pain in the butt. Hmm. Probably could have used that. Well, it's just projectiles. 
I never really found it all that useful in this game. How do you like them jelly donuts? <laughs> Those are burgers, clearly. So what was your um, build in Bloodborne? Um, it's mostly strength, and I've got the Kirk Hammer, looking for anything heavier. Uh, did you get a Ludwig's Holy Blade yet? Mm-hmm. What was that, Todd? That, uh, did you get Ludwig's Holy Blade yet? Not yet. I'm not too okay. far in yet. Um, I just okay. beat Amelia. Okay, then you're, you're at the part where you can get, um... Basically, one of the items that you can buy is a $1,000 key that will uh, unlock part of Cathedral Ward. Mm -hmm. If you go in there, there's a uh, badge that you can pick up that will unlock new items in the uh, in the item shop. Mm -hmm. And Ludwig's Holy Blade is the only item that... Uh... So it doesn't scale as hard as the Kirkhammer does in strength. I'm sorry, you um, guys keep saying Kirk Cameron, I'm hearing Kirk Cameron. <laughs> That's exactly what we're swinging around, Dave. Yep. Localization uh, it, can it, be weird sometimes. The, yeah, the Kirk Hammer <laughs> in Bloodborne <laughs> is a, uh... It's normally just a one arm, a, you know, standard one arm sword. Mm -hmm. But it's tricked form is you have this, like, cinder block on your back. Yeah. Um, that is literally about the size of, like, a good guitar amp just strapped to your back. And when you trick your weapon, you literally just stab the sword into the cinder block, and it becomes... The sword becomes the handle of a giant two-handed hammer. It's beautiful. <laughs> like, my favorite thing to do in this game is, like, most people play Bloodborne very... Like, reactively, like, you run up to an enemy, you attack them a couple times with your quicker weapon, and then you, uh, parry them when they start to reel up and counterattack. But me, I prefer to just, like, get their attention, and then time the heavy attack just right, so as soon as they get in front of me, they get squashed. Mm-hmm. We got the ham stink, by the way. Yeah. Ham stink. <laughs> um, that's actually a good way to play it. Because with this game, uh, they work poise a little differently than they do in Dark Souls. Poise? So, poise in Dark Souls is um, it's a stat that basically means how many hits you can take before you get knocked down. Oh, yeah. And it's hard to determine, but certain weapons have a bigger poise break value than others. Certain armors have a bigger poise break value than armors, like... For example, maces don't do a mace won't do as much damage as a sword, but it'll take three hits with the mace for certain enemies to get knocked out of their attack animation. Oh, while a sword you mean might take them, not yourself. Yes, okay. Yeah, while a sword might take six or seven hits before their a same enemy is knocked out of their attack animation. Yeah, that's another thing I really appreciate about the Kirk Hammer is that you just stun lock people with it because it's so unwieldy and heavy. Yep. But that's the beautiful thing about it. Usually in a Souls game, only certain enemies can really be poised broken. Very few bosses could be. In um, Bloodborne, even giant boss enemies can be po can have their poise broken. Yep. Um, and like uh, Dark Beast Parl is a perfect example of a uh, of an enemy that'll. Uh, if he stand, if he's allowed to just attack you, he'll wreck you. But you can like get him a couple of swings in the back, and he'll just be knocked off his legs. Yep. I kind of learned that with Amelia. Mm. Whereas before, I just um, I kind of let Henriet do her thing and distract her, and mm. I would just come up behind and charge heavy attacks until she knelt forward and I could do a visceral. But then I discovered that if you just combo her instead, you you stun lock her. You just need to focus on dodging stuff once in a blue moon to recharge your stamina. Pretty much a big, big thing in the Souls games are just learning how to le learning when is a safe time to punish them for attacking. Yep. Um, and Ludwig's Holy Blade is literally uh, 
Untricked, it's the exact same sword combo as the Kirkhammer, only instead of it being shoved into a giant cinder block um, to make a hammer, you instead shove the sword into the sheath of the sword. And the sheath of the sword is as big as you are. I like the sound of this already. So it turns this tiny little... Uh, <laughs> Should we stink it up? Sword. Yeah, stink it up. Yeah, stink it up. Stink it up tonight. Um, this could be it a turns, play in. It, it turns this tiny one-handed sword into a giant fuck-off berserk sword. Oh, I thought we were going to have to fight it. No, we just made it drool. Yeah. Ham, ham scented drool. Shantae is a game about friendship, Dave, not violence. <laughs> friendship and drool. So. Oh my god, does this open a puzzle? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's one way to do the ancient beam light puzzle. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, oh, this well, is that's a, fun. That's a word. This, this is for the Vore fans out there. This this will be our little secret, okay? But the nice thing about um, Ludwig's Holy Blade is unlike the Kirkhammer, the Kirkhammer can do a little more if you just go pure strength, but Ludwig's Holy Blade, if you put an arcane gem in it, it actually scales A for both, uh, for arcane damage. So if you want to kind of keep it as a blunt, um, a blunt damage, um, sword, like the Kirkhammer, you can put in gems that will, like, spec its, uh... Strength? Yeah, strength and blunt damage to either A or B+. Mm -hmm. And if you do kind of, like, a mixed strength skill build, you can do just, like, pure physical damage on a ridiculous level, but if you put in like a arcane or lightning or fire gem in it, you'll basically overwrite the damage that it would do from strength, but if you put a lot into arcane, you can basically make the strongest uh, magic base sword in the game. Oh, that is wild. I never really <laughs> thought about putting our- Hey, Risa. What's your build right now? Strength and skill, yes. That was what I did for my first run, and I had a lot of fun with that. Yeah. Yeah, Reese is mostly using, like, the uh, the Beast Cutter, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And the Rider Palash, which is... Isn't it, like, the fastest weapon? Yeah. Um... Like, when I played, I did, um... Uh... Mostly strength, a little bit of skill. That's true. And use the Holy Blade. And I downed so many bosses with that. Like, no problem. I heard the real boss killer was that little tiny mace that you put electricity on. The Tauntria is, is probably one of the most broken weapons in the game. So that is one. <laughs> that is one. It's a form, it's, it just becomes... <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah, it's trick form. Is it just becomes... Uh, it becomes electrified. Yeah. And you don't even have to have a really high arcane scale for it to do really good arcane damage. <laughs> I did hear that the Whirligig saw got nerfed, though. Oh, yeah, because that thing was them. stupid. Whoops. We're a murderer now. Well, oh, come on, Dave. They just lost a little weight. Listen, we ate the flesh pop. We can never go back. This is the darkest four years of our lives, Morty. <laughs> the thing I like most about Bloodborne, though, is Dark Souls has a ton of weapons. Like, a fucking ton of them. Yeah. 
And their upgrade path is so confusing, even when you kind of know what you want. Because, in most cases, using the wrong gem or updating the wrong thing will actively hurt the weapon that you're using. Unless you're geared and skilled a specific way. But with Bloodborne, they just kind of like, here, make use bend materials to make your weapon better, and then if you don't like the gem that you put in, you can just take it out. It is really nice the way they do that, and I really appreciate that every weapon that they give you in that game feels useful. Mm -hmm. And they give you a good spread, like even early on in the game. Like you're not stuck with the default, whatever you chose at first. You end up getting items really quickly. Uh, not to mention that the saw cleaver, your first weapon in the game, that can be your end game weapon. That can you can beat the game with that. Oh yeah, all the beginner weapons can scale into the game really well. Um, I liked using the hunter's axe at first because it makes the first two bosses a little easier. I started with the axe too, but I jumped to Kirkhammer as soon as I possibly could. Good call. I might switch over if I ever get my hands, or when I get my hands, on, like, the stake driver. Hmm. Stake driver's interesting. Um... If you're doing a strength build, I don't think you'll reap the benefits as much. Well, from what I know, it's just, like, it's it could potentially be this highest yes. single strike in the game. Mm-hmm. Which is how I operate most of the time. I just find my way into charging anything fully and then letting it rip. I just think Not it scales its um, Thank you. I think it scales its attack on uh, blood tinge. Blood tinge. Or um, skill instead of strength. Yeah, it's never too late to start leveling that stuff up. Yeah. I also like that every weapon is unique unto itself, and they pair together. They pair it two forms really well. I think it's only certain weapons that really scale well with it. Tom, arcane. Like, what's what is the best use for it? Ludwig's holy blade. Oh, Ludwig's or... holy blade. Have you found that yet? Um, I don't. Tom is Ludwig's holy blade DLC. No, no, no. It's in the main game. It's, oh, I guess uh, it's just in the main game. You have to buy. A uh, key from uh, from the Hunter's Dream. Oh, uh, okay. About ten thousand blood echoes, I think. It might be. Hang on. I think I think Risa, what you're thinking of is Ludwig's other weapon. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, right. Ludwig's other sword. The Moonlight Sword. Yeah, you can get the Moonlight, which is from Software's that, favorite thing. That's DLC. I forgot mm. that one actually does scale better with Arcane. Um, than Ludwig's Holy Blade. <laughs> Damn, how long do these balls last? It's quite a while. That's the level three, isn't it? Uh, no, I just used one of them. Oh. Either way, yeah, they last for ages. If you pop that one on when you're fighting a boss, you might only need to use, like, one or two before they're gone. But yeah, I forgot about that. They, they, uh... modeled Ludwig's Holy Blade on the Moonlight Greatsword, but didn't actually make it, like, the glowing Moonlight Greatsword. Mm -hmm. And then when you fight Ludwig in the DLC, he gets his actual Holy Blade, which is the Moonlight Greatsword. Yes. And it's probably the best boss fight in the entire game. Dude, he's terrifying. They're all terrifying. They really, like... Man, they wanted to nail, like, the Cthulhu feel the Great Ones feel on some of these bosses so good. They really nailed it. I mean, like, I don't really get spooked by horror games very much at all, but the enemy design is really fascinating and sometimes genuinely creepy. Like, Ludwig uh, and Ebreatus are both pretty fucking gnarly. The um, thing that jumps to mind for me is the uh, Amygdala. But not even the one that you fight. It's the one where you're just, um, I think you're in Cathedral Ward, and you're just like, you see a, a couple of items just out there. Yeah. And you go to you go to pick them up, and at that time your insight isn't high enough to be able to comprehend the nightmares that you are seeing. Yeah, you so, just see a little black hole. 
Yeah, you see this little void come and pick you up, and then all of a sudden, you're being suspended in the sky, and you can just briefly make out the outline of this, like, <laughs> Herculean monstrosity that just, like, kills you in one hit. It does mm -hmm. sound pretty cool. Oh, we got, um, um Risky Bunch is gone. The guys with the legs? Oh, nice. They're like... God. You know what to and do with that, right, Dave? Yeah. Hold up uh, the mayor. <laughs> He'd probably just eat it. <laughs> but I love that when you're, um... The fight... Some of the more interesting fights, I actually think, are against the, um... NPC hunters. Those are interesting, because they seem to have very similar movesets to a regular player. They're literally using the exact same weapons that you are. And that is really interesting to me. You, like, you, I, one of my favorites is just a guy who has just the cannon. Like, he has a really fast um, <laughs> sword weapon, and then he just has the cannon as his gun. So, like, if you don't kill him first, he will be the most dangerous person in the fight. Jesus Christ. Oops. I should probably invest in the cannon. It's not like I use my blunderbuss that much to begin with. Uh, cannon can be useful I know. in situations. Um... Hmm... I need to build up my strength a little bit more. I know it takes, like, pretty much all of your ammunition, but... When it's just sitting in my inventory anyway... It depends on what I think you're gonna want to eventually go for. Because if you want to go for uh, Ludwig's Holy Blade, say, or uh, Moonlight Greatsword, save up for that. Because every special move on the Moonlight Greatsword takes up your uh, uh, bullets to use. Really? Yeah. It's worth it if you in like if you're like me and you just have a ton of bullets and stockpiled. Yeah. Um, yeah. Either that or get um use like the flamethrower or something. Sorry, I don't know anything about Bloodborne. Yeah, sorry, it kind of overtook your game. Oh, uh, we're gonna have to. We may have to play through that at some point. Uh. Because I think you would really like it, Dave. Can I get it on PC? Yeah, you can, can't you? Mm, nope. It is a PS4 exclusive. Oh, so oh it's that. not on Steam yet. Nope. I don't, what, I don't know if it's ever going to What, two of these things at once? Are you kidding me? That's how you do it, boys. That's one way to do it. Call that the panic button. <laughs> hey, whatever works. Yeah, no, unfortunately, it's as of now a PS4 exclusive because. Yeah. Well, From Software has that history of um, working with certain game studios that only want their game on. or. Um, like, they did the Dark Souls series is them with Bandai Namco, who are cool with things being released on everywhere. Uh, Demon Souls was made with Atlas, who didn't want it on any other platform. And Bloodborne yep. was made with uh, Sony Japan Studios, uh, which doesn't want it on anything else. Yeah, but back in the days, From was kind of desperate, which is why they reached out to so many different companies to get their stuff published. Now they're yeah. sitting pretty. Yeah. I love Flowey. That's psychedelic eyeball. <laughs> uh oh. That relatable feel when your Venus flytrap tries to kill you. Hashtag Look relatable. Oh. Oh. I was gonna say it's gonna open up the other one, isn't it? It's, it must <laughs> be like a phase. 
Yeah, it's a lot like Legend of Zelda, where you're kind of expected to use your new tools in these fights. I still kind of prefer this to what seemed like their new way of doing things in um, Half Genie Hero. It was almost like, you know, like Crash Bandicoot or Klonoa, where bosses had just like very obvious and brief moments where you could really lay into them. Yeah. As opposed to Zelda, here's its weak spot. Can you guess? Can you guess what? What? You just got the bow. Can you guess what you're supposed to shoot the eyeball with? Gee whiz! There you go. Yeah, I wasn't sure Kill if that was right because it was just like all the bullets are one damage. Oh, this can't be over. Yep, you're fighting literally a Metroid boss wrapped in a Zelda boss. Oh, it's volleyball. Should probably eat something. Good oh, music. I've seen pictures of those things. <laughs> You'll see. I think you will see a boulder before you see one of those. Oh, those are awful! Yeah! Uh, which enemy? The <laughs> giant lost children. Oh god, yeah. Okay, I do know about that. <laughs> like, I have seen pictures of that. Oh, they're fine, they're fine! But they're lost, they're children. Definitely not, and obviously, giant. living a tortured existence. Okay. Auto potion completely revives. That'll be used automatically, right? I guess so. Yeah. There it goes. God damn, this thing could take a beating. Well, I probably should have bought oh. some upgrades too. I've got a lot of money. Yeah, you'll be rolling in it when you get back. You'll be able to afford shampoo, what a luxury! Yeah, here in Sequin Land. Oh, so we gotta expand out that map. Yeah, they really do! Oh, I can just use Pirate Flare. Pirate Flare yeah, I'm sure they could see that from shore. They got good eyes. Sorry, I gotta go shopping first. Spiders are gonna have to wait. Yep. Giant spiders are a joke. <laughs> that could use some laughter. Ha 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 ha. Does the town get bigger? Uh... Seems to be expanding. Let's go for... 
Let's go for more shampoo. And then let's kill some squids. So every time you get, every time you, your life is just a complete reminder to Squid Massacre. Yeah, and I hope you can sleep tonight, Dave. Oh, I never sleep. It's part of why I'm like this. Yeah, me too, bud. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's enough for tonight, though. That was a good stream. I'm gonna have to come back to this. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. But, sorry guys, no Sega tapes tonight. I've got a place to be. I've got to talk to a man about a horse. But next time, <laughs> it's a terrible thing to say about a Danganronpa character. Yeah. <laughs> next time, uh, definitely Sega tapes. Sounds All good right. to me. Yep. Thanks Catch for coming, guys, guys. I really appreciate Take it. it. No problem. Yeah. Anytime. Bye bye. <laughs>